So I want to talk a little bit today about one of the more common problems for hammer throwers of all ages. It's from beginners all the way up to some of the world's best athletes. You see this in their throw. And that's rising up your body along with the hammer. So as you go through your, your winds and the hammer throw, you'll see a lot of throwers, as the hammer starts going up, they start going up with them. Whether it's a toe turn or a heel turn, a lot of people uncork, unscrew um, right up with it, or they'll straighten out the left leg, and you'll find that the body's at the highest as the hammer's at the highest. This is only natural. The hammer's pulling away from you. Um, it's the easy thing to do is just to go with it, but you actually cannot effectively accelerate the hammer throw in that way. To illustrate that a little, um, Koji Morifushi has a great example from one of his articles. He talks about how the hammer throw is like a pendulum back and forth. Now how do you increase the amplitude of the pendulum? You can move with the pendulum or you can move against the pendulum. So if the, the pendulum is coming down, you can move the, the turning point down. Or if the pendulum is going down, you can pull the turning point up. And you watch how that affects it. If we move it down, as it's going down, the amplitude gets smaller and smaller. Now if we try the other way, pulling up as the, it's going down, and pull up, pull up, Pull up, pull up, the amplitude gets bigger and bigger. And that's the goal here, to effectively accelerate the hammer, you can't be moving with it. The result is, is you take the hammer and you move it up, the hammer moves up, your body's going to be actually the lowest point when the hammer's at the highest point. The hammer comes down, your body's actually at its highest point when the hammer is the lowest point. Same asynchronous movement as with the pendulum. And you watch someone like Yuri Sedik, he gets so low, so deep when he catches the hammer. His left leg is almost touching the ground. So as he goes into the turn, he catches it. His knee is literally inches from the ground. And that's what, you know, 86 meter throw, that's what you need to get an 86 meter throw. So how can you actually get that in your throw? There are a couple of ways. The first way is you can just be talented. When people ask Sedik what he did, he says he didn't draw. You know? And I believe him. He just naturally reacted to the hammer, didn't have to think about it at all. Unfortunately, we all aren't that talented. <laughs> so the rest of us have to actively do something. Uh, next thing you can try is just be direct. Try and sit down. Uh, Dr. Bonnerchuk, when he coaches his athletes, will have to tell them to sit down corner. And this is Dr. Bonnerchuk English for when the hammer comes out around here, around the corner as he calls it, Drop the center of gravity. Lower the body. Lower the body as the hammer goes up. A third way that Derek Evely has talked to me about and had me try and has worked quite well is to think that you have a ceiling over your head. Now with this method, you're not thinking about the feet, you're not thinking about the legs, you're thinking about the overall body and keeping it low. And he'll tell his athletes, just think during the whole throw you have a ceiling over your head and you don't want to hit your head, you don't want to come up and hit that ceiling. So as you turn, Think about staying low and not coming up with the hammer. Now, fourth and final way you might want to try relates to a post I did last month about the linear nature of the hammer throw. When I was writing in the post, I said the hammer throw is actually quite linear in many ways. Here, you're moving the hammer out here to the left. Your turn, your step, is actually a forward movement. But you combine that with the rotational force of the hammer turn around. But in reality, all you're thinking about from here is stepping forward. It's the turn that brings you around. Now you can use the same point to think about staying low. When you go into 90 degrees, think about keeping the left knee forward. This will help keep your weight over the left, which is an added side effect, but it also will help you later keep low. So if you keep the weight left over here, over the left foot, you don't need to think about being low. All you need to do is think about moving that left knee forward even more. So if you're here, think about driving the left knee forward onto the toe. So you move from your heel to your toe and keep going forward, down. So it looks like this. Now if you're actually doing a throw and you combine it with the rotational element, you get the drop. That's one way to think about it too. So just think about moving forward, moving towards the hammer, stepping towards the hammer. You can try these ideas out and see what works. 
and hopefully it'll help you get low during your throw. If you want more training tips on throwing or other events, be sure to check out hammermedia.com.